Longevity is a universal goal. Nearly everyone desires to live a longer and healthier life. Well, many people will usually turn to complex diets, supplements, some new, some old, some questionable, or even fancy workouts in order to be healthier. Research suggests that there is a much simpler and potentially easier way to tick a lot, if not all, of the important boxes for health. The issue I feel is that many people are under the impression that in order to be healthy, you need to be some form of athlete or engage in countless hours of cardio and weightlifting. However, this couldn't be further away from the truth. The reality is that some lifting and some walking can do wonders for your overall health and fitness. Yes, you heard that right. Just lifting and just walking can do wonders. Let's break it down though. Starting with lifting. Lifting is legitimately one of the best types of activities you can do for your overall health. Resistance training can positively affect cardiovascular health by improving blood pressure, reducing re resting heart rate, enhancing vascular function. It can also help reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases by improving lipid profiles, including lowering LDL cholesterol as well as increasing HDL cholesterol. Regular resistance training can improve sensory sensitivity, glycemic control, and to some point increase resting metabolic rate, although it won't turn you into a calorie burning furnace machine or whatever people say. Awesome video by Milo um, on the channel, check it out. The increases in resting metabolic rate are there, but are not as extreme as many people think. However, lifting can help in many ways improve your body composition and the overall way that your body manages nutrients. Resistance training is also effective at increasing bone mineral density, which helps prevent osteoporosis and reduces the risk of fractures, particularly in older adults. There is also evidence that resistance training can alleviate symptoms of anxiety, depression, and improve overall mood and cognitive function. We've released a very long podcast episode on lifting and mental health. Check it out at sbspod.com. But overall, lifting equals improvements in quality of life. Lifting also obviously increases muscle mass, strength, and muscular endurance, as well as enhancing overall functional capacity. This is particularly important aside from, you know, looking big and stacked and whatever. Um, for maintaining independence and mobility as you get older. Lifting will literally allow you to be a much more capable individual. Lifting can also be beneficial for individuals with chronic conditions such as arthritis um, as well as cancer by improving muscle strength, reducing some symptoms, and again, enhancing quality of life. In addition, lifting can also reduce visceral fat, even in some cases without necessarily losing a ton of weight. But Overall, if we look at the data around lifting and death from all causes, any amount of lifting can lead to a 15% reduction in the risk of all-cause mortality compared to doing no lifting at all. And as many of you may already be familiar with, the maximum reduction in mortality risk, which is around 27%, is observed at just 60 minutes of lifting per week. So yes, just an hour of lifting per week is enough for you to get a ton of the health benefits as it pertains to lifting and all-cause mortality. Many of you out there may not just be concerned about lifting and health, but also care about making enough gains. But I'd argue that even in the context of making solid muscle and strength gains, an hour of lifting per week, if planned a bit more carefully, can lead to substantial strength and hypertrophy gains. Check out the video we did with Dr. Brad Schoenfeld on the simplest way to gain muscle where we break down essentially that. What's the least you need to do in order to gain an appreciable level of muscle mass? Now, it is likely that your intensity of effort, so how close you're training to failure, is somewhat key in reaping at least some of the health benefits associated with lifting. Although for some populations, for example, the elderly, simply lifting is enough to help a ton and to get a lot of the health benefits. Additionally, and this is where the magic of lifting comes in play, the in the context of health specifically, specifics around exercise selection, repetition ranges, and specific uh, programming sort of considerations are likely of very little importance. So if we assume that you're engaging most major muscle groups and you're lifting with some intensity of effort over time, 
you are likely getting all those health benefits that I just talked about. Although lifting is amazing and resistance training alone may be enough for you to get a good deal of the overall health benefits that exercise has to offer, the combination of some form of aerobic activity and resistance training is likely going to be superior versus either modality on its own. And this is where walking comes in the picture. People will often say that walking is not really exercise, but if you walk enough, walking can lead to similar reductions in the risk for various diseases as running, albeit being much less efficient. Walking 40 to 60 minutes four times per week can also lead to substantial improvements in VO2 max, especially if performed in a briskier, is this, is this even a word, fashion. So a brisk walk, a really brisk walk can actually improve people's VO2 max if done suffi for sufficiently long time throughout the week. Yes, walking is less time efficient than running or any other higher intensity aerobic activity like cycling or swimming, but for many people out there, it can be more manageable to fit in their lifestyle versus those activities. Walking can be combined with social activities, chores, and given its relatively low intensity, the mental preparation required to go for a quick walk is, in my honest opinion at least, much lower than required when you wanna go running or cycling, especially for those who don't particularly enjoy these sort of activities. Going for an intense run is not as easy as just going out for a walk. How much should you aim to walk to reap most of its health benefits? I hear you asking. You may have heard that around 10,000 steps per day is some sort of ma magic number, and there's some truth to that. However, s especially since I assume you will also be lifting for at least 60 minutes per week, anywhere between 6,000 to 8,000 steps per day seems to be enough to give you the majority, if not all, of the health benefits that walking has to offer. This is further supported by recent evidence suggesting that 300 to 600 minutes of moderate physical activity, walking and lifting fall in this category, is enough in order to substantially reduce all-cause mortality rates. The caveat here is that vigorous physical activity, like running, led to similar reductions in all-cause mortality, but in half the time. But you can also combine both. Uh, that's definitely an option if you enjoy doing higher intensity cardio or higher intensity physical activity in general. Overall though, if you are a lifter who averages close to 8,000 steps per day and lifts for approximately an hour per week, you are definitely doing more for your health than you may think. But I hear you, it's not just about your physical activity. There's other factors that we might may need to consider for health but these factors are relatively straightforward. Do your best to eat plenty of whole foods, around 30 to 40 grams of fiber per day, sleep six to eight hours per night at a similar time, maintain a healthy body composition, which isn't necessarily what many influencers will have you think it is, and at the end of the day, you are likely covered. The most important takeaway here is that even if you don't manage to hit these guidelines during busy periods of your life, or, you know, let's say your sleep is a bit worse or you're not able to hit the gym as hard as you wanted, doing your best to be somewhat physically active will play a massive role in your health and will pay massive dividends. Even if that's taking a walk two to three times per week and hitting the gym once per week, it may not be ideal, but you're still getting a lot from it. If you look at the literature on lifting and walking, doing any sort of lifting, as I already mentioned, is enough for substantial decreases in all-cause mortality. And for walking, increasing your step count above 2,000 steps, any few thousand steps you add above that will lead to health improvements. These are important things, as I feel that a lot of people out there may get in their head a bit about physical activity and health and end up doing nothing because they think that doing something is not really worth their time. Get out there, move as much as you can and as much as your schedule allows. Do your best to include some resistance training within your week, even if that's at home in the form of exercise snacks or whatever. And you'll be surprised if you keep it up for a bunch of years with how your health will improve. I know this is not muscle growth or the latest study on how to get bigger biceps, but these, this is an important message for a lot of people out there, especially those who may be a bit more health conscious. Lift weights, walk and just be physically active and don't really lose your mind over 
physical activity and health. The basics are king. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, strongerbyscience.com slash coaching for amazing one-to-one -one coaching, sbspod.com for the best podcast in the world, scientifically proven, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.